All right, Shalom Israel. I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash. Yahweh is who the world ignorantly calls God. Yahweh Shai is his son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, and there's no God beside him. Double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone for being faithful witnesses to the Holy Spirit and salutations to the elect. Whom the Lord have given ears to hear. And um, hey, shalom to the elder brother, Yashawamba. He had uploaded this on the tube, on the YouTube. Um, and you know, it got me to thinking of, you know, the book of Genesis, the third chapter. And how this is a prime example of when Adam and Eve, all right, ate the fruit of wickedness that the serpent was selling. All right, so it says, um... Remote Amazon tribe hooked on internet thanks to Elon Musk Starlink. Now, I like this part right here. It says, for better or for worse, Starlink has brought high-speed internet to the indigenous Marubo tribe in Brazil's remote Amazon forest. In today's digital age, almost everyone is connected, and now thanks to Elon Musk Starlink, that even includes remote tribes in the Amazon rainforest. Though most of the world has been decades, has had decades to grapple with the repercussions of the internet, groups like those living in the Amazon indigenous villages are playing catch up to the combat screen distractions, digital misinformation, and pornography addiction. New York Times journalist Jack Nikas and photographer Victor Moriyama ventured, ventured about 50, mile, 50 miles on foot into the rainforest to reach the Marubo villages. There, they witnessed firsthand how the indigenous tribes struggle with maintaining traditional culture while connecting to the rest of the world online. Starlink's 2022 entry into Brazil made the high-speed digital connection possible, the SpaceX product has established internet access in remote locations around the world using low-orbiting st Starlink satellites. Some of the village elders told the NYT the younger generation have been less interested in traditional ways of life since the internet was brought to their community, to the community. One elder said, People in the tribe have become lazy and are learning the ways of the white people. But she still asks for the internet access to remain. Inoke Marubo, all Marubo people use the same surname. A leader of the tribe is, is a leading advocate for internet access. Still, he noted the internet was initially detrimental, specifically to the tribe's hunting and fishing regimen. With so many to with so much to produce online, no one wanted to do the work, he said. For this reason, Inoke and other and other leaders agreed to implement limits to internet access. The internet is only for two hours in the morning, five hours in the evening, and on Sundays. Alfredo Marubo, the leader of a Marubo Association of Villages, so the NYT, he's especially unsettled by the newfound prevalence of pornography among the tribe's young men. Though the tribe's traditional culture frowns on public romantic affection like kissing, Alfredo said many boys have been sharing sexually explicit videos in group chats. Even video games, namely first-person shooters, have become an issue among the tribe, while some elders worrying they will inspire copycat violence. The issue of internet access has triggered bitter disputes among Marubo, Mar Marubo political leaders with arguments both for and against its usage. Prior to the installation of Starlink antennas in the region, many Marubo already had cell phones. The phones were used to communicate when in the city or to take photographs. Of course, these tribes have internet access. 
these tribes having internet access isn't entirely a bad thing. With Starlink, the Marubo people can stay better connected to early to other nearby villages, alert one another of potential dangers, and discover new job and educational opportunities. Now it says many of the young Marubo tribe members now dream of traveling the world or establishing careers in cities beyond the rainforest. In Roque Tool, the NYT, one of the biggest benefits of the internet is during emergencies. Should a member of the tribe be bitten by a venomous snake, they can now call a helicopter for an airlift to the hospital rather than relaying numerous radio messages. All right. So, um, as you see, the internet, as even spelled out in this uh, article, has its benefits, has its benefits, you know, nevertheless, the cons outweigh the proof. And it puts me in mind of the book of Genesis, the third chapter. In which the understanding of this chapter, as we see right here at the top on the left hand side, the fall of man. Okay? Because here it is, you had an innocent people, you know, who held on to, to traditional ways, ways that um ways that were advantageous to generations after generation. Now they're taking on to ways that are deadly, all right, to generation after generation. As we as we read, you know, now people are lazy, you know, now the men are addicted to pornography and video games. And this is what happens when you sign on to the philosophies of the devil. All right. And very often is a nation destroyed when they do when they do so now and this is genesis the third chapter in the first verse now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the lord god had made now this serpent right here is speaking on a man to prove that we'll grab revelation chapter 9 um chapter 12 verse 9 all right, and this is speaking on the prophecy of the last days. Now I'm gonna just jump jump straight to the point. All right, and at this point in the chapter, it's speaking on uh, the time of World War Three, when the so-called white man, which is otherwise known as a serpent, the wicked, all right, the evil, is gonna fight. Him and his army is going to fight the Lord and his army. So this is Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Now we go into the word deceive. It says, uh, To cause to stray, to lead astray, lead aside from the right from the right way. Now, remember what the scriptures say in Psalms 58, that he's like the deaf adder that stopped if the ear. Alright, let me grab that. Because deceit is something that this devil is made for. It says, let me start the uh, whew, let's start at 2 Psalms 58 and 2 Yet in heart ye work wickedness Ye weigh the violence of your hands And the earth The wicked are estranged from the womb They go astray as soon as they be born Speaking lies Their poison is like the poison of a serpent They are like the deaf adder That stoppeth the ear So the wicked would be as a deaf adder Or as a deceiver Causing others to go astray From what they know is right or what is right for them. All right. And um, in the case of introducing the internet to the people, which it really goes into 
getting everybody prepared to receive the mark of the beast, which is the, um, an RFID chip today. All right, but even prior to, it's the they're introducing them to a better life through their technology. Which, even as any salesman, all right, you introduce or you yeah. So as I was saying, you know, like with any uh, salesperson, they'll sell you, they'll make it. To where when they sell this product, it's something that you've been missing. You know? It's something that is an eye opener and you feel like you can't live without it now. It'll enhance your life. But as we just read, all right, he's as a deaf adder that stopped if the year. All right, it's, it's speaking lies. So now, with that, let's go back to. Uh, Genesis 3, right? Because mind you, the, the title or the synopsis of this, this chapter is the fall of man. So it says, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Right, let me start from two again. Let's start at the top. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, so we just established the serpent is a man. Right? And in the case of, you know, uh, 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 introducing the people to the internet, it's always going to be um, introduced as a better life for them. You know? As the, you know, the... The reasons set forth in the article spoke of, you know, if something bad happened to somebody, you know, they could uh, call for an ambulance or, uh, well, in their case, uh, a helicopter. And, you know, it would just help them uh, be able to graft them into society, all right, uh, uh, a lot better. So as the, the, the benefit set forth is almost like a... Um, You know, it's almost as a way to help them fit in. All right. So, and that shows you like the, and that shows you how, you know, the benefits that the devil bring forth is to make you pretty much, is, in other words, makes you feel bad, you know, for, for being separate or separated. All right. But, um, you know. Going back to uh, Genesis 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now the trees in Genesis 3 represents the other nations. Right? And the garden is the field. The garden or the field is the earth. So the other nations and the earth, the Most High said that we should not eat of, you know, of what they got going on. We should not part. Pretty much, in other words, the Lord saying we should not partake in what they got going on. All right. According to what's that Ezekiel 31 and 5, just to prove that point. It says. Um, Ezekiel 31 and 3, Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud and of in high stature, and its top was among the thick boughs. But Salaki, this is actually talking about the chosen seed. All right. But this, um, again, just proving how the trees, you know, which in this chapter is speaking on. It says, the waters made him great, the deep set him up on high, with her rivers running round about his plants, and sent out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field. Right? So again, um, the trees represent the other nations, and the field 
set forth, I believe even Yahweh Shah said the field is the earth. Let me see if I could find that one. Well, he said the field is the world. Yeah, Matthew 13 and 38. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. And if I'm jumping around a lot, it's because this is how you actually teach the Bible. You see, the book of Genesis, for those who don't know, is a synopsis of the Bible. But then now to break down in certain terms of the book of Genesis, you got to go to other chapters or you got to, yeah, you got to go to other books and chapters as it is written, you know, precept upon precept here a little and there a little. So it says, um, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. All right. What's the fruit now of these different trees represents the philosophies of these trees, the philosophies of these nations, you know, the way how they teach and how they manage themselves. All right. The Lord said, don't mingle with that. As a matter of fact, this is Hosea chapter 10. Verse 13. You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies. Because thou didst trust in thy way and the multitude of thy mighty men. All right. So it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, All right, let me start from three. But of the fruit of, tr of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye shall eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. All right, so here it is. The devil's playing semantics. All right, saying, oh, you should not surely die. But in the process of time, I people, in the process of time that did bring death, as a matter of fact, we go down to verse, um, Thirteen, and the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Which the beasts also represent uh, men, all right, nations. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and remember what the scriptures say about Esau Eden, which is a serpent, all right, the wicked. This is what? That he is the lowest among the heathen. And thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And thus represents confusion. All right, whereas he thinks he's something that he's not. All right, even in the last days, as scriptures say, he exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship. All right. The scriptures say what? Uh... That his inward thought is that his house shall continue forever. This is way, this is folly. All right. Yet his posterity approves the saying. That's Psalm 49. So his ways are ways of folly, are ways of confusion, are ways that don't match up with the ways that the Lord um, sets up. All right. Yet he still believes in these uh, fairy tales. It says, and I will put my enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. All right. Now, let me go over to. Um, Proverbs chapter five. Right, because it's the point of.
verse 6, right? And when the woman saw, let me start at verse 5 again. For God doth know that in the day the day that ye eat the roof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, right? So the philosophies and the ways of the other nations, you know, it might look good, all right? Or in the sense of, you know, her eating or her partaking in the ways of these other nations, you know, because the Lord said, the scriptures say what? That the Lord, the product of wisdom. All right. Whereas she is um, being carnal minded, thinking of the flesh. All right. And it tasted good to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also of her husband with her. And he did eat. All right. And again, in the process of time, it brought curses. And what's the Lord spelled out in Genesis 3 and 16? All right. Um, Ezra speaks on it. But real quick, you know, again, going into the point of the fruit tasting good. Right. This is Proverbs chapter 3, uh, 5, verse 1. My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow down thy ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. And, you know, it's important for us to really understand that this devil can only bring death to you. As a matter of fact, when we go into the book of Revelation 13... And it speaks on, um, before we even get to the verse of 13, where he introduces the world to the mark of the beast. It speaks on how um, he deceived the world with those um, miracles. I think that's verse 14, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And deceiveth them that dwell in the earth by the means of those miracles. Right. So he causes the people to go astray. From what is right from the ways that the Lord set upon the earth by the means of those miracles. Which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Which even to this day, you know, concerning the internet and concerning his technology, he's, a, he's able to make man walk and paraplegics uh, walk and the blind to see. Those that were blind from birth to see. So it's as if he's God, you know. Pulling the people away from who truly is God, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and pushing him towards him and his. All right? There's no coincidence that as this devil increases in his technology, that the world gets more demonic. Saying to them at the well on the earth that they should make an image to the beef, beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So essentially through um, his magic trick, so to speak, through his technology, he causes everybody to uh, give homage to him, to make him, to make him and his vision the way of um, how life should be uh, governed. All right. Otherwise known as what the New World Order. And as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Right? Which, at the end of the day, according to Revelation 14 and 9, you're going to die a grievous death. Remember, uh, Proverbs 5 and, was it 5 and 4? Her end is as bitter as wormwood. Alright? And taking hold to these philosophies, which will make you take hold, or taking hold to uh, the falsification um, or the false, was it the false mindset of him being God and his technology being able to better his technology being able to better your life? You're going to take that RFID chip, and you're going to be destroyed. All right, you're going to eat a nuclear missile, like it says in Zechariah 14 and 12. All right, Revelation 14 and 9, your eyes shall consume away in in, in its holes and your tongue. You know, your flesh will consume away on your body. You're going to eat, drink the wine of the wrath of the Most High. 
You know, that's Zechariah 14 and 12 and Revelation 14 and 9. All right. And great pain will come to those who succumb to the RFID chip. I quoted it, but I'll read it. Right. Revelation 14 and 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. All right. So from modern day, you know, of a, you know, a destroyed society. All right. Dumbing the people down, making them lazy, making them addicted to things that can destroy them. On to actually, all right, being mentally destroyed, on to actually being physically destroyed if you take that mark of the beast. All right. Like the scriptures say, with all thy getting, get understanding. All right, this is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. Let me grab this. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 21. For God, let me start at verse 20. For there be many that shall perish in this life, because they despise the law of God that is set before them. For God hath given straight, which the word straight is, It says narrow, confined space or place, right? And then remember, Eve was breaking it down to uh, the serpent, the man Esau, all right? Which us, we see the man Esau because that's who he would be considered today. Or actually, he would be considered a, a Caucasian man, the ruler of the earth, right? But he's the seed. He's the wicked one. He's known as Cain, Right? He's known as everything wrong. <laughs> but um, for God had given straight commandments to such as came, right? Eve understood that. For God said, this is pretty much he broke down to uh, the serpent what we should eat and what we shouldn't eat. You know? And um, pretty much the Lord just came straight with it. If you eat this, you're going to die. If you eat this, you're going to live. For God hath given straight commandments to such as came, what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should do to observe, and what they should observe, meaning what to take heed to, to avoid punishment. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but spake against him, and imagined vain things, and it deceived themselves, pretty much went, away, went outside of the way, all right, and another thing. You must understand that these philosophies in the mindset of these people that take hold on these philosophies that this devil bring, it's always of a gray area. You know, like the Lord says, you know, male and female. Esau says there's a third option. But his laws, you know, like. Here is the Lord gives you a yay or nay, but Esau gives you a maybe. And deceives themselves by the wicked deeds and said of the most high that he is not and knew not of his and knew not his ways. But his law have they despised and denied his covenant and his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. All right, jumping down to verse 40. Eight, O thou Adam, what hast thou done? For though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone, 
but we all that come of thee. Right? So this is a very grave sentence for going after the ways of the devil. Right? No matter how sweet it tastes or how sweet it may be to the ears, you know that it's afterwards the long-term effects is very dire. All right? So if that, shalom to the elect.